The boredom of normalcy and the numbness of mediocrity stiffens your passions. I was so sick of myself. I was so bored in my life, man. I was so tired of being mediocre. I was mediocre because I wasn't doing the things to be exceptional. I was losing my mind, man, going door to door selling life insurance at a debit company. You ever say to yourself, man, it's got to be more to my life than this? If you've ever said that, that's cause it is. You got to go and get at that. If you don't do it, life becomes real normal and real mediocre to you. If normal is getting on your nerves, then you got to change something. Because that, that shit get on your nerves, man. Being mediocre was driving me crazy. When I was homeless, man, it just pushed me. Poverty, I, I was sick of it. And homeless is a whole nother level of poverty. I ain't trying to be preachy or nothing, but that pushed me towards my faith. Because I had, I had lost my faith, man. I thought God wasn't listening. He was listening. I just wasn't asking for nothing. See, once you commit yourself, the how will come. The way will come. You will figure it out. You want to begin to just challenge yourself. You want to stretch yourself because you really don't know what you can't do. And I want to challenge you right now about raising your goals and stretch yourself. You really have to stretch yourself to discover your stuff. See, I think that there are not many people that come to seminars or that will watch a program of this nature. Why? Most people are just satisfied to where they are. 87% of people go to jobs that they hate. On Monday morning, the heart attack rate increases over 35%. The heart said, didn't I tell you I didn't want to go and attack them? So you want to find out what resonates with you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. When you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are, and you act like you don't have any. I want you to think about the goals that you want to achieve, and I really want to challenge you to make up your mind that you're going to make that happen for yourself. When I was a little boy, my goal was to just buy groceries for our family, it was to buy clothes for my brothers and sisters. But who would have thought anybody looking in on this kid and these seven children, you have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. No one could have convinced me that I would be doing what I'm doing right now. You were born to do something great with your life, regardless of where you come from, regardless of what you've been carrying with you. We put this gun to our head every day that tells us we're not enough. You do it over and over and over again, and there's a better way forward. You could decide today that you were born to do something great, to set this weapon down, whatever it is. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe that I can do what I'm now doing. Just given my circumstances, I earn millions of dollars every year. No one could have convinced me being labeled educable, mental retarded, failing twice in school, no college training. I did not know how I can do what I'm doing right now. I'll never forget Mike Williams, my mentor. I remember Mike saying, Les, you can do this. Mike, huh? Mike, how, man? Wait a minute, Mike. I don't think I can do that. Les, you can. Les, why don't you just test yourself? Why don't you stretch, Les? Come on, man. And here's something I, I realized. Write this out. Sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. You have this kind of convoluted, limiting belief about why you can't do something. That's this your own BS story you keep telling yourself. How about you just decide it's a lie, even if it is true? See, most people never achieve their goals because most people suffer from possibility blindness. It's not what you don't have, it's what you think you need that keeps you from being successful. It's not what you don't have. See, I was focused on what I didn't have. I was focused on the negative things. I said, negative things are the things that you see when you're not focused on your goal. What do you come with that you have within you? This is not what I was believing for, but it's close. It's good enough. 
I was hoping for that management position. It didn't work out. This other job is good enough. You don't have to settle. Now, you may have some good enough areas in your life, but don't stop there. You have to keep stretching, keep believing for the fullness of what God promised. What God has spoken over you will come to pass. Not partially, not to where you say this is good enough. He's going to do it even though it seems too late. Even though you've made mistakes, God has some of these who would have ever thought blessings come in your way. Favor that doesn't make sense. What am I saying? Don't settle for a watered down version of what God promised you. There are dreams he's whispered to you in the night. Things that seem so big, that may seem so unlikely. God wouldn't have promised it if he wasn't going to bring it to pass. Are you settling for good enough? Talking yourself into it? Thoughts will tell you all the reasons why it's not going to happen for you. You're too old. You've made too many mistakes. You don't have the talent, the resources. None of that stops our God. There are some far out things God has in your future. Goals and dreams that you can't accomplish in the natural. The good news is God knows how to do the extraordinary. But sometimes the reason we settle is life hasn't turned out the way we thought. Unfair things have happened. Now we've lost our passion. The truth is we've all had bad breaks. We can all find a reason to live offended, angry, but if you'll refuse to settle, on the other side of that hurt is a new level of your destiny. Press past the disappointments. Press past those lonely nights. What if my father would have settled in poverty? I wouldn't be up here. What if Joseph would have settled in bitterness, betrayed by his brothers? He would have never become the prime minister of Egypt. Amazing things await you if you just don't settle. The enemy would love for us to get so discouraged, so disappointed that we settle on the way to our destiny. This is what happened with the Israelites. God brought them out of slavery, made it next door to the promised land. But when they saw how big the people were, they became too discouraged to believe. They settled in the desert. And I believe many of you are next door to your promised land. The question is, are you going to settle there or are you going to stir your faith up? These giants may be big, but I know my God is bigger. This financial difficulty, this trouble at work, but I know God is still on the throne. I know today I'm not looking at settlers. I'm looking at overcomers. I'm looking at victors, not victims. Now, not settling may mean getting training so your gifts can come out in new ways developing your business plan, meeting with mentors to bring about your goal, joining a support group to help break the addiction. It may mean putting more effort into your marriage. Perhaps not settling for you is going up to the gym, taking walks at night instead of watching television. But I wonder where you could be in 10 years if you just don't settle. Who knows the doors he's going to open, the dreams you're going to accomplish, the gifts that are going to come out of you. What will you miss if you settle in mediocrity, settle in dysfunction? You will miss who you were created to be. Friends, what's in front of you is way too important to settle. Don't let good enough become good enough. Get your fire back and go after the destiny that belongs to you. How do you know when you're successful? Do you have to be a millionaire? No. All we ask of you is that you earn all you possibly can. It doesn't matter 10,000 a year or a million a year. It doesn't matter as long as you've done the best you possibly can. Be the most you possibly can. And here's why. The essence of life is growth. To do the best you can. And here's what's interesting. Humans are the only life form that will settle for less. Now, why wouldn't human beings strive to their maximum possibility? Here's why. Because we've been given the dignity of choice. And here's the choice. To become part of what we could be, enough to get by, or to become all 
that we can be.